I've been building small servers for myself for some time now. This episode is about making the fourth generation. It always has been named Sequoia and in the beginning it was meant to hold my ever-growing and of course pirated movie collection. It evolved from one hard drive up to four in its prime. Then I scaled it down to two SSD drives because of the power consumption and other services I wanted to run on it. The opportunity to make a new re-edition appeared when I picked up 3D printing and thus 3D modeling. Now I could have enclosure that exactly fits my needs. The hardware goal was to keep some form of passive cooled motherboard and switch from SSD drives back to hard drives due to the demand for larger disk space. I originally thought to build it around Raspberry Pi 4, but the hassle with USB to SATA converters didn't justify the low price. Another downside is the ARM architecture, which makes it not so convenient to run Docker containers. Then I discovered Odroid H2 Plus and started modeling the enclosure around it in Fusion 360. The key element of the design was visual simplicity. No buttons, displays or bulky power supply brick. All in one. The front and back bezel is a honeycomb mesh design and is connected to the main body via snap fingers. The back bezel holds IEC power connector, RJ45 connector and a single USB port. The inner components are the 15 volt power supply, the Odroid H2 Plus and two hard drives. All components are held in place on simple sliders that fit the rails inside the main body. The complete list of components is main body, front and back bezel, slider for the power supply, motherboard and two hard drives, different types of screws and connectors, the panel mount RJ45 and USB extension cords, the power supply, panel mount IEC connector, SATA data and power cables, the hard drives, and last but not least, the motherboard itself. For putting all of this together, I will need crimping, stripping and cutting pliers, small Phillips head screwdriver, and rolls of black, blue and yellow-green wire. The motherboard is Odroid H2+. It has dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, suitable to run as a router. The usual bunch of USB ports, video and audio outputs. It takes 15 to 20 volts through barrel connector. It runs 4-core Intel processor, passively cooled. The pin header similar to the one we can find on Raspberry Pi exposes two serial ports, I2C buses and additional USB. Next to it we have a fan connector. On the other side we have SATA power and data connectors and backup battery. On the flip side there are two slots for sodium RAM up to 32 GB and large NVMe slot for additional SSD drive. The motherboard doesn't come with the SATA cables and I had to purchase it separately. The power cable has a non-standard connector so that is definitely easier than trying to decipher which China connector to use and crimp it by myself. The data cable is standard and it is quite short. The power supply I use is the Minwell RS35-15. It is a 15 volt constant voltage power supply capable of delivering 35 watts. The construction is made for fitting into enclosure. The screw connectors are for supplying mains voltage and outputting regulated voltage. There is also a trimmer for fine tuning the output voltage. The mains voltage power connector is a standard IEC C14 used for bigger power supplies and it is made as a snap fit panel mount. The one I chose has a switch for disconnecting the server from the mains voltage entirely. The cables are to be connected via fasten connectors. Since the whole motherboard will be inside of the enclosure, I will also need to pull out at least one USB and one Ethernet port. For that I bought a panel mount extension cables. Both will be fastened by the M3 countersink screws. Let's start with the power supply. The first prototype of the 3D printed slider was bending a lot, so I fitted the second generation with these ribs. And the idea is that the ribs will lean onto the power supply and make it a bit more sturdy. It will also obstruct the airflow, which might find its way through the power supply instead. Two countersunk M3 screws are the only thing that hold these two parts together. Next is the motherboard. It has two sets of holes for flat-headed screws. The problem is that one slider has to go around the RAM connector and the second set of screws are in different positions. A bit of trouble with the design, but it came out perfect on the first go. Since I need to fasten the screws into the hollow plastic columns on the slider, I'm using a B3 screws made just for that.
The sliders for the hard drives are simple brackets which are connected to the hard drives with special U and C screws. I forgot to count the size of the head into the design, so I needed to find the right one in my ever-growing collection. Let's mount some connectors. First is the IEC. It is a snap fit design, so there's no need for screws. Let's see if I designed the opening correctly. Nah, it doesn't seem so, so I just need to chamfer the edges a little bit. That's better. Next is the RJ45 extension cable and the USB extension cable. Both are held in place by N3 countersink screws. With all the sliders fastened to the components, I can test if all of that fits into the enclosure. But first, I'll put some rubber feet on the bottom to make it more grippy. The rails are blind on one side, so the component will not slide out when put too far. It will not be held in place securely but the mess of the cables in the back will probably hold it strongly enough. This part of the design can be definitely improved in some future revision. The next step is the cabling of the IEC connector and power supply. The top three leads are directly connected to the power cable. The two rows of the bottom leads are for the switch. In some connectors the wiring between the connector leads and the switch is already done by manufacturer. In this cheap one I need to connect it by myself. The earth ground has to be directly connected to the power supply and never to be disconnected. Both the neutral and line leads will go through the switch first and then to the power supply. Since there are no markings on the connector, I need to find out how the leads are interconnected. For that, I will use the continuity test of my multimeter. The OL means open loop and we are looking for number close to zero. That's it. For plugging cables to the IEC we need a fasten connector and for the power supply we need a Y-type terminal. The wires need to be stripped first and then gripped with the special pliers. I find it easier to put the terminal first to the jaws, then put it in the straight wire and then crimp it. Since I already had this server running without the enclosure for a few weeks, I already have the pigtail with the better connector fitted with the Y-type terminals. Now I can test the connection. I connected the mains voltage with the switch set to OFF. The multimeter is switched to measuring AC voltage. It should read something around 230 volts. And it does. And now to test the output voltage of the power supply. Switching the multimeter to DC voltage and it should read something around 15 volts. Remember when I mentioned the trimmer for fine tuning the output voltage? The nominal voltage is 15 volts and the trimmer can change it to plus or minus 2 volts. Since the Odroid is able to handle up to 20 volts, it is a good practice to turn the voltage on the power supply all the way up. It will lower the current and thus lower the voltage drop on the pigtail. Just make sure it will not be more than 20 volts. 
the power supply gives 17 volts and that's perfectly fine. And finally, it's time to put all of this together. Okay, it looks like it's running. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.